And Amy, you have a book that you have written, and it's about magic, not necessarily teaching you magic, but it's a story of magic, is it not? Yeah, it's called Hocus Pocus Practice Focus, and it's a children's picture book for kids ages three to eight. Uh, and it's meant to inspire kids to become magicians and especially girls. Now, I feel like, and t Sam and I were talking a little bit about that this morning. Yeah. I was the quintessential kid that lived in a small town that enjoyed magic, but was never going to be able to get to a city to see a magic shop. But I saw magic shops like in the media. You'd yeah. see, and then anytime there was a city that had a magic shop, I would beg my parents to take me there so I could see all the tricks and the and the gimmicks and the gags and stuff there. St. Augustine was really the only place that I could go. I don't know if that magic shop is still there, but that was my magic shop. And getting introduced to magic uh, kind of was like a boy's thing for me. I mean, like, girls not so much known for magic, are they? Yeah, I mean, can you name a single woman who's a magician? I cannot. I challenge you. I tried thinking about it, we, too. We, we really tried. Yeah, and we were like, there's got to be one. And it never even really occurred to me, either. Amy, am I? Is it is it surprising to you that it was surprising to us, as we sat in our office discussing this, that we're like, oh, yeah, Penn Gillette was right. This is a boys' club. Where are the lady magicians? Yeah, so there are actually a lot of women who are yeah. magicians and professional magicians who make a career out of it. Of course, there are way more men who make a career out of it for a lot of different reasons. And I think one of the main reasons for that is there are just there are just not as many role models. There aren't just like you can't think of a woman who's a magician. There are many, but they're not household names to the extent that men are. And so what I'm really hoping to accomplish with this book is to show kids from a very young age that women are magicians and girls are magicians and to really just normalize seeing that without making the book explicitly about the fact that they're girls or women they just happen to be right perfect what why do you think that is that there aren't any more like popular women magicians I would, because it, I, I would feel like women are smarter yeah. and more disciplined and go. they could uh, put, agree. put in the time and better looking like it just makes it well, so maybe it's a whole thing where back in the day you guys used to burn us because you thought we were witches. No. <laughs> okay. uh, okay. oh yeah. yeah the burning i made it uh, i thought it was a it drowning is, uh, I, th I think a part of it is how magic is passed down like amy mentioned the the mentorship is so important and that's kind of like been it's a boys club and the men pa pass it down to the next generation i learned from men who were you know 60 70 80 years old when i was getting into magic and so that's the what's lacking is girls ability to just see that yes we can be there i think it's changing right now there's a lot of amazing women on tv right now thanks to pen and tellers fool us so it's changing but i think the idea of this book is to instill it into a, a young generation that of course I can be a magician if I'm a girl as, as anyone else can. And, and the other part of it that I love about the book is how it teaches kids the process of what it takes to learn magic. I think that's something that's been missing from kind of a, a, a general understanding of society about what magic is about. And Amy has really put that into the story of the book. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about because Amy, I'm glad, we, I haven't uh, had a chance to read the book. I'm going to get it oh, and yeah. purchase it. And you can pre-order now on Amazon yes, and I would urge everybody to do it. And what's the name of the book? I, I don't. I think we blew past that because we're so darn excited to talk mm. to you guys. What's the, what's the <laughs> name of the book? It's called Hocus Pocus Practice Focus. Hocus Pocus Practice Focus. And I don't it, practice. I need to focus. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. that's how I'm going to remember. It does come it. out um, next Tuesday, October 25th, but they are actually giving us a free download, a PDF copy of the book just for Tom and Dan listeners. Oh, man. Yeah, absolutely. If you visit amykimlatt.com slash mediocre, your listeners can download a free PDF copy. And if they love the book, they can, of course, order a hard copy and also leave a review on Amazon. My wife loves books, and she's cheap. She's going there now. <laughs> I can well, see her doing it. Or just pre-order the book. Yeah, like you we're going to buy it. Yeah, yeah, you could get the PDF, but uh, just get the uh, hardcover uh, book. To also, have a... I think a lot of our listeners are going to want to pre-order the book just because our listeners love your husband, and uh, and I think they're going to love you. Like I think it's yeah. really cool to to peel back. You know, it's like one more uh, one more huge corners or like flagship stone in the Kostya Kimlot uh, <laughs> universe is the wife and how important you know that is. You know, I think that's really neat. So I it's, thank you. It's a magical family. I feel like you, I I think what's cool about it is that no matter whether kids are into magic or not, no matter what they're into, the message about uh, whenever you're learning anything, you're going to have difficulties and you have to practice and you have to persist. 
the message in there is going to connect to any children and it's meant for ages three to eight ages three to eight and this is really the book that i needed as a kid because we joke that I actually was the first magician in this family because I did a magic show for my third grade class and then I did another magic show for my eighth grade class. And it was after the eighth grade magic show and it did not go well. I had a cups and balls routine go amiss. Oh, no. And so after that, I was like, oh, I guess magic must not just not be for me. And and this book really shows you that failure is a necessary part of the process. Yeah. So I wanted to talk to you about the fact that it, the book is about how to actually learn magic. And the, the, the fact that there's practice in the title yeah. makes me think that it's more of a realistic view because I want to mention my sons were into magic and we they told me they're like, Dad, I want to learn magic. And then That's I was like, cool. well, and I was like, well, I'm, I got excited. I was like, well, I could teach. I'm like, I know a famous magician and all, <laughs> and like he, and then like, I, I, I say you could show. Him. Well, and then I'm like, <laughs> we can go on YouTube and learn tricks and with hours of practice. And they're like, no, 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 we want to <laughs> learn actual magic so right. that we have, that we could just make things right. disappear with our minds. And I'm like, well, that doesn't exist. You have to actually put in ten thousand yeah. dollars of work, oh, like practice uh, and work into this. And they weren't interested in the actual work that it takes to. <laughs> yeah, I think that's how most kids are. And and in the book, you see, you see the main character Mila. She's exactly like that. She sees magic happen, and she just declares, "I'm a magician now." And then she just instantly jumps into creating these effects. And of course none of her effects work because magic is not real. Right. And then once she figures out, oh, I actually have to study and practice at it, then after lots and lots of work, she's able to actually make the magic tricks happen. I'm no, so great. glad you put the word practice in the book too, because that is, and this is, I'm not just making this up or pandering because you're here. That's the biggest <laughs> thing, and Tom knows this, the biggest thing I've taught Maisie. Remember, this was this week. She's, she's a dancer. And I Man, told she her, practices. and she practices, <laughs> but she didn't practice enough, and she really wanted to get her aerial down. And that's where you you do. It's basically a cartwheel with no hands. Okay. Yeah. And I told her I was like, the only way you're going to get it is if you practice. And then she just continued to do it, continued to, do, and then she finally got it last week. But you don't see very many YouTube videos. You don't see many video games. You don't see many things out there that our kids digest that teach them the art of practicing, like. Practicing is pretty much, and what I told my daughter it's is a I was grind. Like, it's pretty much everything. Like this show, it's practicing. Like the business that Tom and I've created, it's practicing. Kostya's entire empire of magic, <laughs> yeah, practicing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This book that you've written is pra And it, I'm just so glad you put that in there because it's a big thing in my household. And I know May's going to love reading the book. And just thank you for hammering home some of those things I'm trying to teach my daughter. My God. Awesome. Yeah. It, it's going to reframe. It, it reframed the way our kids, too, our little three and a half year old, once we read the book to her, it reframed her understanding of what magic is and what it takes to learn it. I can't wait for that to happen again. No matter what thing the kids are into, it's going to help them look at it in a new way. Kids are going to get it because the message sneaks in through a really fun rhyming story. Mm -hmm. By the way, I mean, our daughter, when she when she tried to do this magic trick that Kostya has taught her, and it, of course, didn't work, instead of getting frustrated like you would expect out of a three-year-old, she actually said, oh, that's okay. I just need her practice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they, they know. They know the process. They know the workflow now. And I'm so glad you made this book from three to eight because that's uh, the Tom Van <laughs> sweet spot of reading level. <laughs> <laughs> you almost <laughs> aged him out. <laughs> you almost yeah, aged him out, close. I, I almost wrote well, you a personal letter and said, yeah, my host cannot read the oh, book. No. This this is where I can read it out loud to my kids and I can look like the president of the United States, uh, which was my dream in yeah. front of the class. Where I'm like, anything above, uh, like I tried Harry Potter one time. I, oh. bought, I well, those are made up words. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get you it. for sure did not know how to say Hermione, <laughs> I had right? to give up and pretend. I was like, ah, daddy's losing his voice <laughs> because I'm too embarrassed <laughs> to admit that I can't read Harry Potter. So uh, I want to ask you guys and Amy about uh, if you go to amykimlot.com. Uh, oh, man, you you'll love it. it. Check it out. Um, some of the reviews you have from the celebrities. Uh, you and they're have, real, uh, too. They'll blow your mind. The uh, who's who of uh, magic royalty. Oh, can you say who does the forward in your. David Copperfield does the forward. And my mind is also blown by this fact. It's cr It's absolutely insane to think that David Copperfield would. Lind, I mean, because he's a pretty mysterious dude. Like, he, he keeps is. the I act up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He keeps I have no the idea. act up. Where right? does he live? He, I, he lives floating in the clouds. <laughs> he's like, about I have always thought he floated. Does I've he always thought he lives on an island somewhere. Yeah, he's me too. Isolated. Yeah, and yeah. all he's doing is working on his gadgets. He lives and, on Magic Island. Yeah. <laughs> where, where does he live? 
He lives in Las Vegas. Oh, uh, <laughs> that makes Pretty a lot more sense. Out. Yeah, wow, well, Amy, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, the whole to where he works. <laughs> Genius. Yeah, wow, Genius. this book's gonna be good. <laughs> so, no, it was actually it was really crazy because we, we, Amy sent him a copy of the book, and within minutes he said, "Call me." Yeah, I was he shocked. Was like, I was on the way to pick up our kids from school, and I look at my phone at a stoplight, and David Copperfield's in my inbox saying, "Here's my cell. Call me. Love the book." I. She I, was like, was yeah, she was freaking out. That's, that's insane. insane. I was like, oh, yeah, relax. You're going to talk to him. It'll be great. But just the fact that, you know, we, we I know how hard she's worked on it, and we got to show it to a few people. But then once you start sending it out to, to people around the world, to get that kind of reaction has really validated the message and how magicians connect to it. Yeah, and, and the majority of the endorsements that I've received from magicians have actually been from women. I've, of course, received many endorsements from men and very famous men as well. But the majority of the endorsements have actually been from professional uh, magicians who happen to be women and the reaction that I've gotten from them has been incredible. People are just incredibly touched to see themselves in these pages. I'm honestly surprised that there hasn't been a female magician super tour, right? Yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah, Kings yeah, yeah. of Comedy, Queens yeah. of Magic. Queens of Magic. Yeah. And I do. I, I'm putting this idea into the universe, and sometimes things will happen. And it'll come to Orlando. It'll roll through Orlando, and it'll yeah. be the best of the best of ladies magicians. Focusing on ladies' magic and Kostya, there's a little idea. <laughs> yeah, 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 a little yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. That would work. It's, it's probably it. already yeah. happening, right? Shouldn't it already be happening? It is. This is the time. I mean, honestly, this is like the right book for the right time because yeah. we see it changing again. On Penn Teller Fool Us for the last few seasons, they featured many more women magicians. They're getting the spotlight. There's lots on social media. There's some that have been wearing uh, like the Got Talent shows in different countries. Yeah. Not in the U.S. yet, but absolutely. Now, now is the time. It's really exciting because. You're not going to care whether it's a woman or a man. It's going to be just, it makes sense that everyone's just doing magic and it continues to be popular for kids. And this book is, I think, just going to, like, our ideal is that it's going to, in 10 years, Amy's going to hear from the superstar women in magic that I got started because I read your book in the library. That's so cool. Uh, Amy, last question, because I know you guys have to go. Yeah, uh, we got to get them out of here. You, you got to go uh, pick up your kid because <laughs> there's a power outage at the school. <laughs> but, oh, my God. By the way, I feel like a power, like they used to go to school with no power, right? <laughs> like back in the <laughs> early 1900s. Yeah, it's not even hot today. Yeah, just yeah pack do, your candles. Do, do, you, do you need power <laughs> to stand in front of the class and then just, uh, just you know, tell, tell them a story? Be like, oh, it's nap time. <laughs> like, uh, what do you need power yeah, for? Pencils don't require batteries. So, so Amy, uh, I'm curious about just when you go to write a children's book, do you fault? Do you have to get some sort of person to kind of like, because how do you know you're writing it with the right uh, reading levels? Do you have to not use certain words? Like if the reading levels above or, you know, from three yeah. to eight, I'm how just, simplistic do the concepts have to I'm, be? I'm, yeah. I'm curious to, if there's some sort of universal format that some publisher tells you, or like, like the a, editor goes through and yeah, like, yeah. No, you can't use that word. They don't know what <laughs> yeah. that is. That's a great question. And well, I am my own publisher. So fortunately, I didn't nice. have to answer to any boss, but nice. myself. but obviously, I want the book to be readable by families together. Sure. Um, so actually, I was in luck because my mom is a reading teacher and she has a master's in reading education from John Hopkins. Oh, so my God. I just showed her the draft and she told me what to do as far as vocabulary. It's goes. fine. You'll you do everything great. <laughs> I love you. Yeah, I, you guys are like a super talented family. My God. <laughs> Because I wouldn't even know where to start. I'm like, well, how, uh, like, uh, but how, uh, uh, like, you're showing that you don't know how to start. You're showing. Well, well I'm yeah. just saying, like, well, well, like what's yeah, too well, complicated yeah, for also, an average eight year old? Also, I, I have a background in writing, not necessarily for children, but my background is in PR and marketing communications. And so part of doing that is writing things at a third grade level anyway. I mean, you want adults to be able to understand what sure. you're saying in most simpl simplistic terms. So I'm not afraid of being able to translate difficult concepts in easy language. That's so awesome. Well, hey, I, we, we can't uh, thank you enough for the time. Uh, Kosha and Amy, thank you so much for being here, guys. Best of luck with the book. We urge all of our listeners go to Amazon or pre-order it. It's out next week. And yep. uh, yeah, anything else you guys want to tell our guys? Yeah, and be sure to go to oh, amykimlatt.com yeah. slash mediocre to download your free PDF copy and if you love it you can order it and also write an honest review on amazon as well you'll be having one incoming from the dennis family i assure you um thank you guys thank so you much. much we appreciate it we'll talk thank to you, you soon thank you. thanks guys yeah good seeing you guys too love you be good